Checking in on Mike Elko and Texas A&M here as we are just about five or six weeks away from August camp. Talking Texas A&M right here at the Boys of College Football. We've got Graham Hartman on the line from Gigum Gazette. Graham, what's going on today? Not much. How about you? I'm doing just fine. Appreciate you stopping by to break down the Aggies. Uh, let's start with recruiting. Of course, anytime uh, somebody outside the Texas A&M fan base hears the, the term recruiting in Texas A&M, they're forever going to attach it, or at least uh, in the time being, to 2022. They're going to attach it to previous successes in the recruiting rankings, but also defections. But hey, everybody's got them. So spinning forward to 2025, how is Mike Elko and his coaching staff uh, hitting the recruiting trail? Well, I've been really impressed so far. Um, it's uh, well, so it's funny you mentioned 2022. One of the big reasons that that class was so big um, was the level of talent in the state of Texas that year, especially in the city of Houston. Um, but 2025 uh, honestly might match it. Um, just with the amount of uh, high-level prospects across uh, the whole state. I think it's, uh, if you go by the composite, 24-7 sports composite, last time I checked, 18 players in the top 100 overall uh, from the state of Texas. So there's plenty plenty to be had. Um, and uh, especially, um, there, there's, I think, three, well, two of them are five stars. One of them is a borderline five-star. Tackles all just in the DFW area. And they're all offensive tackles. So a lot of talent in the state. And I think Elko and his staff are leveraging that really well so far. Um, we, uh, uh, our highest commit right now is actually from out of state, um, Corona, California, who saw on long street, uh, quarterback who just got done at the elite 11, uh, really impressed there. Um, another California commit actually Adonis Curry, um, uh, more recent um he's a cornerback i think we have either a four or five man class of corner right now i think it may be four um but we're looking to maybe add one more depending on uh if if someone wants in who's a high up name on the board um but uh we just hosted a couple big recruiting weekends back to back to back um uh, june 7th was the biggest one had um, all three of those tackles that I mentioned um, come in. That's uh, Michael Fasusi from Louisville, Ty Haywood from Denton, and Lamont Rogers from Mesquite. Um, all three really highly regarded. And, uh, you know, it would be tough just because of the nature of things. It would be tough to get more than one. Um, but I, I feel great about the Aggies' chances of getting at least one of those three Um and that would be that would be big news for Elko if he could do that. We already have um, either four or five offensive linemen committed, um, some that they feel are going to be risers in the in the rankings. But any one of those three guys would be a linchpin for the uh, offensive line class. A decision we're watching closely coming up on June thirtieth. Noah McKyle from um, also from out west. I oh I forget if he's uh, Arizona or California, but he's a linebacker um, coming down to A and M in Oregon. Uh, and that'll be on June 30th. Um, would would love to see the Aggies land him. Um, we already have one linebacker committed in Kelvion Riggins out of Forney, which is also in the DFW area. But if we got Mikhail to go along with him, that would be a great two-man class. So um, other targets, um, we got Kalik Lockett, wide receiver. Um, we got uh, Jonah Williams. Uh, he... He, I guess he's listed at safety, but he could play safety or linebacker. He's like 6'3", 210, and can add to his frame. All being big names, these are all going to go down to signing day pretty much. And with the way the portal is now, I guess even further. Um, but Lincoln Cure, tight end uh, from Kansas. Jonah Williams, safety linebacker from uh, Galveston. Uh, all names that A&M is watching closely. Are there any particular position groups that are more vital – to filling out this roster going forward than others? Well, I mean, corner and offensive line has been the thing for a while, and we already have a lot of bodies committed at those two positions, so I feel good about that. Both could use, like, a, a, a linchpin recruit. I think you may have that in Adonis Curry at corner, um, but one of those big offensive linemen that I've been mentioning would be a huge, um, huge boost as well. 
Has anything been stated in the last couple of weeks during these official visits or otherwise that would cause you to be more confident or less confident about the lean of these particular targets, any of them that uh, seem to favor Texas A&M or seem to be drifting somewhere else? Um, well, there's some that are tough to get a read on uh, from everything I've uh, I've surmised about Ty Haywood, one of those five-star offensive tackles. He's just a little tough to read. Um, some people say Oklahoma. Some people have been saying Alabama. Some of the AM insiders have been saying, hey, AM's got much more of a shot here than other people think. Um, but uh, Lamont Rogers, uh, another one of those tackles, uh, is a guy that a lot of the insiders have expressed confidence in. Uh, Kalik Lockett, the wide receiver uh, out of Saxe, he is a, he's another guy that um, I think he received some predictions to Texas not long ago, but some of the a and insiders have been saying, I, I think a has more of a shot than, than some of these other people are, uh, are, are giving them uh, in this recruitment. So um, those are a couple that I would watch. Um, and Jonah Williams, uh, like I said, he is apparently a, a, an Aggie lean and received a lot of predictions to a and but he doesn't have a specific date set or anything. Graham Harmon stopping by to break down Texas A&M for us, the Aggies and everyone else in the SEC, of course, about a month away from SEC Media Days and then right into August camp. You can catch Graham's work at Gigum Gazette. Please give us a like here at the Voice of College Football and subscribe as well. 